Hello again. We continue today with the problem of the Ultra 2 power supply, which conveniently, unlike the Ultra 1, which appears to require a PhD, comes apart quite nicely. And it's a beautiful looking thing. It's delightfully complicated, well packed, good density. We have a clearly defined input section, an output section, nice big heat transformers, or uh, heat sinks rather. Good ventilation, two different fans. On the output side, there are a fair number of, well, they're not enormous capacitors by any stretch of the imagination, but there's a good number. Bunch of chokes, transformer, custom. Some pretty serious looking plugs here. I had a question a couple of times on why I don't use an AT power supply to replace these and that's actually a really good question and I did look into it and the reason is here. So our output voltages you have 3, 3, 5, 0, plus 12 and then minus 12 and plus 3.0 volts and an ATX power supply will give you 3.3 volts, 5 volts, plus 12 volts, minus 12 and they certainly don't do 3.0. 55 amps of 3.3 is probably pushing it for a PC. No, no, actually I lie. These days with the phenomenal suck on GPUs, I bet that's probably just fine. The 12 amps each on the two different 3 volt rails, that's a bigger problem. Getting something to drop 55 amps of 3.3 or however many amps is on the uh, input side on the PC power supply down to 3 volts. You could use a regulator, but at 24 volts cumulatively, I'm sorry, 24 amps cumulatively, that's pretty big. Um, however, that being said, I, oh, and there's one more thing. Uh, apparently this sucker is programmable, and so the uh, main board in the sun can say, instead of giving me 3 volts, give me 2.5 volts and the power supply will rate itself down, which an ATX power supply most assuredly does not. Anyway, this being said, I have fixed it. I have solved the problem. Hooray! Buying a new power supply, hooray! So, I could have spent ages trying to figure out why the old power supply didn't work. Test the capacitors, not that I had the equipment to do that. Not that I really have the analog electronics knowledge to know how to do that properly. Could have just replaced all of them. But I wasn't actually sure that the problem was on the power supply in the first place. It might have been on the main board for all I knew. So on eBay I found one for 50 bucks from a guy in Minneapolis, actually a computer. Those people that tear things apart and sound piece by piece, the word escapes me. Anyway. It showed up literally less than 24 hours later, and it works fine. That's the score. It solved the problem of not knowing whether it was the power supply or the main board. I wasn't going off onto a horrendous tangent about trying to fix the bloody thing, and God knows I'm off on a tangent already. And we do know that's a problem with me. So, I have a working sun again. I've uh, run a couple of days with a burn-in test, as far as I can tell everything's operating, so we're good to carry on. I have it mostly back together again. I've got all of the SCSI cards back in, I've got the big graphic card back in, all the internal disks back in, I have my other CD-ROM drive hooked up. I had the internal back connected, but it's making some rather interesting noises, so we're not going to do that right now. But things are looking good. Um, what I don't have hooked up is the 13W3 big monitor right now because now we don't have to deal with these wonderful raster problems. So, do we have all of our disk? So this is the upper of the QLogic cards which I have the drive plugged into so in theory there it goes. So we'll send a break whose key I forget. Is it F? in break. There we go. So, this is important to remember for now. We've got the S-Bus, Q-Logic, and it's in position 3. 
target one, unit zero, and this is our big C gate. So we're going to boot off the internal disk. I think disk zero is unnecessary. Disk would have sufficed, but anyway, there it goes. So here's our first hint. Corrupt label. Wrong magic number. So this is Solaris desperately trying to figure out what kind of disk this is and failing. All right, so. These are all of our disks. Okay, it's a puddle of junk, but this is the important part here. C2, T1, D0. This is this external's Cray disk here. And you see it points to, it's a sim link to the devices directory which has SBUS, oop, wrong line, QLogic 3 SD at 1,0A. So each of the letters, oh good, the system's still coming up. Let's try that again, shall we? Oh, and we have no decent shell. Let's try that again. Dooby dooby doo. So we've got controller two, target one, disk zero, slice zero. And these slices are the disk partitions. So SD1, comma A, zero A is slice zero, slice one, two, three, so on, so on, so forth. This is kind of cool, but it's already got this thing enumerated out, which is the problem. Now in theory, this slice two is supposed to be the whole disk. So in theory, if we do uh, C2 slice two, and we'll output it to here. Actually, we'll do it to root. My T key doesn't work very well, by the way. I.O. error. Corrupt label. Wrong magic number. So again, my theory is that Solaris is desperately trying to figure out what the partition table is, and it's using this partition table even to tell it where the beginning and the end of the disk is when it's doing a whole uh, disk whatever. The devices table is actually kind of interesting. So we have each of the partitions, then we have a raw. And for those of you who are familiar with Solaris, there's a raw disk. But I forgot Solaris doesn't let you do options after the fact. And you see it just simply points to each of these raw devices, which is clever. I like the way that it blows us out in this lovely hierarchical tree. It's really nice. However, it doesn't help us still. We cannot use any of these partitions. The raw images simply means that it's unbuffered access to the disk. It doesn't help us. Uh, the exact same thing happens. Uh, a la... Come on, keyboard. Oops. Where are we? Oh dear. Well, that's easy. Now we have access to these. So we know C is the raw disk. So we'll take our... C... Raw... No difference. Now this is a curious thing. A chap on one of the lists pointed out that Solaris formats disks. It must have the ability to access the raw disk somehow. So we have our C2 T1 D0. And it's talking to an SD at 1 comma 0. Well, if the letters are the partition, then 1 comma 0 should be the whole disk, right? I mean, that, that makes sense. Ah. Go away. But there's no such thing. There is no SD1, 0. And there's no magic by which it suddenly appears out of nowhere. So, 
I do not believe that I can conveniently access the road devices in Solaris. I think that Solaris is really, really excited to try and help me. And even though it has the ability to format discs like it, there must be a way. There's got to be a way, but I don't know what the heck it is. I've, I've never needed to try. Anyways, I think the solution probably lies in an alternate operating system. So, for now, I'm going to put this down. I'm going to say, Solaris, you've had your chance. I'm just not smart enough to know how to use it, so we're going to move on. Anyways, the end of this one's probably a bit boring, but now you see what it is that I've been looking at for the last however long, once I got my power supply working again. Actually, before the power supply died, but I digress. I appreciate all of the comments, all of the hints, all of the offers of help. I hope you guys have a wonderful evening. Thanks for watching.